Yes, it's time for The World This Week, seven days for Paris Space Correspondents, one hour. We welcome Regis Le Sommier of Paris Match Magazine. How are you, sir? Very good. Also uh, with us, Time Magazine's Vivian Walt, reporter Craig Capitas, author of Bear Hunting with the Politburo. How mm -hmm. are you, sir? And uh, Harold Hyman of uh, French all-news channel BFM TV. Welcome to The World This Week, where you can always weigh in on the conversation on Facebook throughout the week and Twitter. You can find us at Francois F24. After an intense two-round French presidential election that saw the incumbent booted from office, this week, well, it was time to hit the pause button on acrimony. The outgoing conservative, Nicolas Sarkozy, standing alongside incoming socialist Francois Hollande, commemorations for VE Day, May the 8th, 1945, the Nazi surrender that marked the end of World War II. With the inauguration and handover next Tuesday, this week has been a chance for Hollande to catch his breath. For now, it's the best part of my mandate. I go around. I'm waiting for next Tuesday for the handover of power. People seem happy. In fact, when I see the number of people greeting me, I wonder how I only got 51.6% of the vote. All right, Harold Hyman, that was at his goodbye for uh, the regional council where he's uh, uh, leaving, of course, to go on to uh, uh, bigger duties. Uh, François Hollande, a uh, uh, sense of irony there, which uh, we haven't always seen on the campaign trail about uh, the task that awaits. It's dangerous to play with that because uh, Sarkozy played with that so much, it, it did him in. Because uh, Hollande is considerably more uh, sober. He's, in fact, very unfunny generally, although he's a very nice guy when you meet him. And Sarkozy is a snark, so he shouldn't uh, be switching roles like that. It's not a good thing. Do you agree with that, Regis? Well, I think I, I've seen this week that there's a book about uh, Hollande joke that was already mm. uh, printed. So. I mean, he's not funny, but he's supposed to be funny, I mean, privately, so. Supposed to be funny? Yes. <laughs> no, he actually is. I mean, everybody who's met with him, like, on casual conversation have said that he, you know, has a great, great sense of, sense of humor. And he looks like Kalush. So. Well, yeah, if you, well, Kalush would be, uh, would have more of a, he's more of a big enjoying life type of person. Kalush, Kalush if you, you know, study his uh, sense of humor was much more corrosive. And uh, so I wouldn't the say... The guy that. isn't president yet. Let's give him a few more days. Kalush tried to run for president <laughs> at one point, if that, you that, remember. <laughs> Vivian Walt, it is a short transition period, uh, ten, nine days uh, before the, the inauguration. Do you feel like you're getting reacquainted with this guy who's been... French people know him because he's been a mainstay of politics for decades, but we're not used to quite yet hearing the words President Hollande. Well, it's really, it, it is very strange. I mean, to the outside world, to Americans, for example, he came across as a kind of party apparatchik. And uh, in fact, he sort of stepped into the role as that. But I think the, the phrase, you know, this is the best part of my mandate is incredibly truthful. Um, in fact, when I was watching the party in the Place de la Bastille, I thought, I hope he's really enjoying it. Because from now on, it's just one enormous headache. Hmm. And I think we'll see a much more stressed out, uh, you know, a very different personality than, than we've seen until now. Until now, we've seen this very kind of easygoing, uh, really kind of almost uh, a relief after Sarkozy. All right. And uh, of course, Francois Hollande's victory last Sunday, naturally the cover story for all of the news weeklies. And Hey, Regis Le Sommier, what's one of your staff members doing on the cover of Paris Match? <laughs> um, yes, I mean, well, it's, it's not a secret or, you know, not anything. Uh, yeah, we, and we have a first lady in Paris Match. That's true. Yeah. She's uh, well, uh, first, would you say first lady or first partner? Because Valérie Trévelaire, journalist at Paris Match, um, is not married to François Hollande. It's complicated, yes. Uh, she's not married to him. She's divorced. Uh, he was not married. He's separated from his, uh, the wife, uh, the mother of his children. So it's, Who it's ran a, for president last who time? Who ran for president last time. So she has uh, 
they both have kids who can say, I saw my mother lose five years ago and now I see my father win this time. So it's, um, yeah, it's a kind of unique, I've seen, you know, I've read stuff in the press. I mean, I think the Maureen Dowd uh, op-head in the New York Times was absolutely incredible called Amour and Désamour. It's about Sarkozy, State of Union and, uh, and, and, when, and, and Holland, you know, uh, own, you know, private uh, life. And, uh, and I think, I think the Americans and a lot of people I see are looking at us as, you know, we have a weird way of looking at things or, or more. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say French uh, don't care, but, you know, they may be a little easygoing about, a little more easygoing than other nations about uh, these kind of stuff. But uh, I don't think it changes the fact that it's kind of a complicated uh, Well, you know, the big relation. difference is that in the U.S. they say that if, uh, you know, if a woman can't trust her husband, how can a country trust uh, uh, th that man to be in office. And that's something you never hear, no. ever. Mm -hmm. It's more like if the husband can have two or three mistresses, imagine the great things he can do, because <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a very artful it, guy. It seems to me also like her role, being a partner, not a wife, really kind of challenges the whole notion of what is this French first lady role? I mean, it's really been evolving of, in recent years. It have, means yeah, absolutely nothing. It means nothing, all, but I'm not sure she's going to be I, I happy hope, with that. I hope, I hope the, the president to be Hollande is as good with arithmetic as he appears to be with women. Because, because he's got a lot of splaining to do as soon as he gets to the Elysee Palace. All right, but enjoy the moment, Craig. Hollande, who celebrated with Trevor don't, don't be grumpy on right stage now, after his... Eighty-five per eight. The debt of this country is 85% of its gross domestic product. Well, I don't the, think he denies it. He says, no, he's saying it's probably more. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, Craig Capitas, when you see him on stage with Trevera uh, after his acceptance speech and you hear the strains of Edith Piaf's La Vie en Rose uh, playing on the accordion on, on, in, in the background mm -hmm. after the how should we say, colorful uh, private life that uh, Régis Le Sommier has just described, at least it makes for easy copy to write. It makes for easy copy, and we should all go out to a ganget on the Marne River, and we'll do a little <laughs> dancing with him, and, and papa ti papa ta. Uh, I think what Harold pointed out before, when you started out, was prescient. Don't let this guy turn into a Sarkozy. And this kind of talk about, mm. about the, whether it's the first wife or the first partner or the first poodle or whatever it is, gets away some, some very, very serious things that pres presumptive President Hollande has to deal with immediately. And, and the, the, it's, it's, it's serious. Right, it, and when you say immediately, you mean it next Tuesday, mm -hmm. 10 a.m., the swearing in of François Hollande as president of France. His day, though, will end in Berlin. He'll meet Angela Merkel. Um, forget politics as the art of seduction. The Economist already depicting, even though he's not yet president, Hollande and Merkel as an <laughs> old married couple, as you can see uh, in, that, in that cartoon. And uh, uh, the week uh, uh, began with the chancellor ruling out a rewrite of Europe's fiscal pact. And the week concluded with Merkel effectively repeating that opening gambit. Growth through structural reform is important and necessary. Growth through debt would throw us back to the beginning of the crisis. And that's why we haven't done it, and that's why we won't do it. All right, so Angela Merkel sticking to the script when it comes to austerity and belt tightening first. But Régis Le Sommier, um, again, that's a gambit ahead of that meeting. Uh, is the momentum perhaps this time in favor of the French, what with uh, the results coming from the ballot box there and also coming from the ballot box in local elections in Germany? Well, it's going to be a, a big struggle, I guess. Uh, and there's no doubt about it that uh, the Germans, and, and, and then again, that the Germans have pointed out that they took the measure that the French should have taken a uh, long time ago under Schroeder, which was, was interesting, who was a socialist. And, and they've, they've taken, they're, they're now, you know, in a position, in a position of strength. Now France, uh, and especially Hollande, wants, uh, of course, to uh, 
um, uh, restart growth in the European Union and say that there won't, won't be any improvement of the situation if we don't re renegotiate. So it's going to be a tough battle between the two. And I don't think that, I mean, it has been said that uh, Merkel, of course, she stepped in during the campaign saying that she, she would, would have liked Sarkozy uh, to win. But I don't think, you know, I think they have they have much more in common than that. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's been said that Hollande and her won't get along together. I don't think so. I think, you know, they're both, mm -hmm. um, Merkel is, is a strong woman, but she, she knows how to understand that France, mm -hmm. the partnership with France needs to be strong and needs to remain as such. <clears throat> and that with what's happening in Greece, and especially with Spain, uh, we don't, you know, we really need to work together mm -hmm. very closely. Harold Hyman, uh, mm -hmm. the um, uh, leader of the Socialists in Parliament, Jean-Marc Ayrault, is now being tipped as the next prime minister. And one of his main attributes is he speaks German. Well, he's one of the few, but it's, it's a good thing. Uh, most of the Germans around uh, Angela Merkel actually speak French. So it's not, as I learned today, it's not such a big deal. I think the bigger question for me is uh, in history, uh, the fact that do you, when you get elected, just wipe out all the treaties your predecessor signed because uh, you didn't agree with them. And he's going to have a lot of trouble with that. But he uh, hasn't said he'll do that. He said he would tack on a growth clause to the uh, Well, campaign. either, you know, you do, a, you, you remove the, the, the kist or you, you plop on a, a, a you know, <laughs> sort of, a, you know, in prothèse, what do you call that? Um, you know, a, 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 a piece of rubber onto it. But uh, in, in either case, for NATO, Afghanistan, and, and for the European questions. Um, he, he will create a lot of bad blood if he just wipes the, the, the slate clean. It's terribly irresponsible for one of the two giants of Europe to do that. Your prediction on this? I mean, it's, it seems to me that NATO is a much simpler issue. And I think he would have, you know, most of France behind him. And really what he's doing is accelerating a timetable rather than ripping up something. Um, clearly, the, the Afghan campaign is on the wane, and he would be fairly safe to carry through with that kind of c campaign promise. He'll have some massaging to do with Obama, clearly. But in terms of the growth pact, I think that it seems to me like there's going to have to be some give on both sides, on the German side and on the French mm -hmm. side. They both need each other. <coughs> Neither side wants total political instability. And uh, they're going to have to work out some compromise, solution. And uh, this week we saw the German uh, finance minister uh, talk up the concept of increased spending at home. Uh, the Economist, we mentioned earlier in its lead editorial, calling on the French to tighten their belts on the Germans to boost domestic spending and on Italian voters to refrain from butchering Mario Monti's reform. Like some dreadful joke, the euro needs French reform, German extravagance, and Italian political maturity, writes, uh, writes the newspaper. Uh, Craig Capitas, uh, are we going to see a different sort of consensus emerge from the next couple of weeks and months? Uh, you are going to see a wrestling match. Uh, there's many ways to parse this whole argument. But the wrestling match is going to be based on the fact that 55% that of the GDP of France is generated by public spending, which is the largest in Europe. That, that in broad brushstrokes, is, mm. is Keynesian giveaway economics. There's nothing wrong with Keynesian economics. There's nothing wrong with a soupçon of Milton Friedman, more conservative economics. The way the markets and economists of class and politicians have classically looked at this is we've got to take a little bit from column one and a little bit from column B and see if we can make it work. But when you have 55% of your GDP and growing, coming out of the public sector, being generated by public spending, you have a problem. And this is the fine nut of President, future President Hollande's problem. How is he going to make this balance? And I certainly don't know how he's going to do it because the public is calling for more public spending, which is understandable. I mean, you can completely understand that. But again, the math doesn't work. Otherwise, if, if he keeps up with the Keynesian side, 
you're going to see that cascade effect from Greece coming in here a lot quicker mm -hmm. than you think. But it, I mean, the public wants it, but there's a lack of memory. We went through this with Mitterrand from 81 to 83. Precisely. Who remembers the uh, carnet de sortie de devise, the... Uh, the uh, uh, how do you call but it? Harold, that was that was a long time ago. Yeah, oh, I was already a grown boy. But there's and not, and that, that nobody's Free suggesting years. that you they're going to. You needed nobody's a, a suggesting few. we're going to return to those days. I am because uh, the th same sort of speech is going through their head. They they um, did forced hiring in big companies. You, I went to big companies. They said can't hire. We did. We filled up our contingentment. They had they had um, what do you call it? Uh, mandatory roles. They had to hire 10% mm -hmm. of staff who was under such age. Then, after two years, you couldn't take out currency. You needed that uh, exit control pass, which would be controlled at the border with silly Belgium. We're not talking about Qatar or something. This is to go any place, 5,000 francs a year. I mean, there is a past of going crazy with Keynesian solutions, which he probably remembers and probably will try to avoid, because it was Absolutely. pretty bad. I think, he, I think he will try to avoid it. I think, you know the one phrase you, keep, you kept seeing in the press over the past few days is, is, is the old song, you know, only Nixon could go to China, only right. Hollande can go to Brussels, or only Hollande can go to Berlin. It's a cliche because it, cliches are true, and, and, and this may be it. I think what, what, you, what you're clearly mm -hmm. seeing now is is take Marine Le Pen and her mob, just, you know, leave them... The far right. Yeah, the far right, just send put them, them on a boat and send them away. I think you're <laughs> seeing the <laughs> bulk of France starting to rally around Hollande. Yeah. I, 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 I've really sensed this in the street, and I think that's a really good thing. And I thought it was terrific. And a lot of people were really impressed when both of them went on VE, VE Day to place the wreath. It, it, it was a... It, that it, was a big mm -hmm. gesture. That... It, it a powerful profound. gesture that yes. perhaps you can only pull off, you know, here in France, but but it goes back to this. The, it, it's an arithmetic problem, and and bless his heart, you know, we all hope he can fix it, but it's not going to be easy. Okay, that's going to be the uh, uh, of course the problem with the um, incoming uh, for the incoming president on the domestic front. Of course, on the foreign front, there'll be Greece, and when we come back. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, how Europe is handling the situation there. And we'll also be taking a look at a campaign issue across the Atlantic that surfaced this week. U.S. President Barack Obama in favor of gay marriage. Stay with us.